So there we have it, Jesus, the Son of God, causing crowds to gather around him. See, the reason why is because he was the Son of God. And because he was the Son of God, he was performing miracles, changing and transforming lives there and then. He was the modern day celebrity. People would be gathering around him, wanting to see more of him, wanting just to get a touch of his clothes even. And so Jesus often liked to revert to try to get some solace and some quiet and some solitude. And actually there, Jesus took a boat across the Sea of Galilee with his friends, the disciples. As he took the boat, what greeted him there on the other side of the Sea of Galilee? More people. More people. Can you imagine their feeling when they saw more people? Well, Jesus didn't mind. Jesus gathered the people together, got on the hillside and began to teach and began to talk. And as he did so, more and more people gathered around to hear what he had to say. But as time went on, as night began to draw in, Jesus looked at his disciples, his friends, and said, hey, I feel a bit peckish. I think it's time that we ate together. And actually, the reality was there was no supermarkets to go to. There was no McDonald's. There was no fast food anywhere. They could just pick up something quick to eat. And actually, even if they wanted to, they didn't have the money. The disciples said, look, we've got no money, Jesus. There's so many people here. How are we going to feed all these people? Well, Jesus did what any good parent would do and think about the pat lunch. So he called out, has anyone brought anything? Thankfully, there was a little boy who had brought his pat lunch. He had five loaves and two fishes. Five loaves and two fishes. Can you imagine their face when they saw this small amount of food and the 5,000 plus people they had to feed? The panic must have set in straight there. Now, Jesus was calm as a cucumber, so no worries. He blessed the food and told his disciples, look, give it out, give it out. So the disciples began to hand out this food to all the people that had gathered around Jesus. And as they did so, people began to be fed. More people began to be fed and more and more and more and more. And all of a sudden, everyone had been fed, not just a little bit, but to the absolutely full. So the disciples did what any good host would do. They began to clear up all the mess that they had left. And can you imagine how many baskets they had afterwards? They had not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, not ten, not eleven, but twelve baskets full of food. Can you imagine what that must have felt like at that moment in time? Jesus had literally taken something that was so ordinary and did something extraordinary. You see, the thing is, God is in the business of taking something that is ordinary and making it extraordinary. That's the amazing thing. Actually, God is continuing to do that with the bicycle. It might seem really ordinary to you and me. Often it can seem a bit of a a tool of transportation, isn't it? A leisure thing. But actually, the bicycle is a tool for transformation. Just for people just like Nawala. You see, for her... The bicycle is not just transportation to her. It's a tool of transformation because she can now get to school and be able to have the education that she needs to become the nurse that she wants to be when she's older. That's the potential that she has within her. And actually, the bicycle enables that to happen. And actually, there's so many other people just like now that actually, if they can begin to have this tool of transformation in their life, something that might seem really ordinary to us, but God can make it extraordinary and set them on a new path in their life to come. And we can help break the cycle of poverty. So I want to encourage you, join us here now at the All We Can Movement as we look to break the cycle of poverty.